hi there everybody welcome back to our channel so today guys we're gonna cover one of the most important topics and this is one topic that is actually overlooked by many traders most of the time and they find themselves in a position where you know things are not going well and they're basically making a lot of losses by basically overlooking this topic so that's how important it is so to jump in further guys today we're going to be covering how to hold your trades so this is one topic that's actually important because when we start trading forex we end up thinking that it's going to be just a nice game of us actually pressing a lot of buttons and enjoying the thrill and fun of forex trading which is not the case right you're gonna find out that forex is an industry where you're gonna basically have a time where you're gonna be on the charts and have a time where you're gonna be off the charts right you're gonna be able to have a life as well when you trade forex when you trade forex you don't just become a chart zombie you end up also having to improve your life and basically be able to manage your time and become an overall professional trader so you're gonna see today guys we're gonna cover one of the most important topics and that is holding your trades so yeah you're gonna find out that patience is actually one of the most important required traits that you're gonna have as a trader so for those who are actually new to our channel i want you guys to actually go check the last previous video that we made we're actually showing you guys how to grow an account from hundred dollars into five hundred dollars right so that's the account that i actually want you guys to go check it out it also has some looking details that i think it will help actually if you're gonna go through it so going on with the video, as you can see, to basically continue trading this account, I analyzed the market for a buy. So throughout my analysis, I knew that the market is supposed to actually hit my potential resistance structure. So the market was still at the mid-range zone. It was still yet still deciding. So my question was, if you were in this position now, would you have closed the trades or would you have just let your trades run? So that's the question I wanted you to ask yourself to see what would you have done instead. So basically, I personally decided not to close. So the market reversed and it went to losses. So at least it came back up as basically previously predicted. The market had to come and retest the overall resistance structure. As you could see, that's how I was able to now close the account with a very huge profit. So that's what we mean when we say we want you to learn in terms of how to hold your accounts what factors affect which trades to hold and which trades can you not hold so on the next lesson guys i hope you're gonna watch the entire video we're gonna cover how long you should hold your trades so yeah guys now we're actually about to cover one of the most important lessons and that is how long should you hold your trades so when we're done with this lesson guys we're going to be analyzing the market together so be sure to actually get to that point be sure you watch the video until we actually show you how we analyze the market so we're going to show you how we actually use the lessons that we're going to cover from here to help you guys be able to find better entries and be able to reach your trading success so without wasting any further time let's continue so now we're going to quickly cover the overview of our lesson guys we're going to firstly start with how long you should hold your trades risk reward ratio what kind of trade you're in how volatile is the market and we're going to finish with the two last topics which is tips on holding on to your winning trades and how to find trading success so before we get to that guys i want to start with the most important lesson and that is basically being able to understand how the market works right so whenever you trade guys you have to know that every time you trade you need to firstly start by identifying your high and your low basically what we mean by that is being able to identify your support and resistance our support is basically our floor meaning that we want to use the support structure to be able to know when the market will reverse as this will play the role of a floor so whenever we have a ceiling we know that that basically acts as our resistance right as long as we're at the bottom we're looking for buying opportunities and as long as we're at the top we're looking for selling opportunities so let's say basically you're at this point and you're analyzing the market and as you see the market has been flowing like this and it gets to a point where you want to enter a trade right so the market was pushing down towards our support structure and you found yourself at the support and you basically wanted to go for a buy right so this is how you would do when you analyze so i want you guys to know that it doesn't mean that because i analyze like this the market will move exactly like that you're gonna see it's actually never the case when i analyze i'm only using the past events to help me be able to find highly probable trades though i said the market will move in this direction it doesn't mean it will move 
like that exactly the market will decide how long it will take for it to reach that point as you can see it's up to the market to decide how long it will take to reach your level when you choose a direction you're only just choosing the direction and not how long the market will actually reach your level meaning there guys as long as you're gonna be trading here with us when we talk about forex that time is irrelevant meaning that whenever you enter a trade don't say that because you entered the trade today you wanted to close on the same date only the market will decide when to close you'll get to see that the only thing that matters in the forex industry is of course volatility right volatility is obviously made by what the power of buyers and sellers that's what actually causes the market to move meaning that whenever i'm going to be trading the forex industry guys i have to know that it doesn't mean that because i want to go for a direction the market should move exactly like that at that time so let me explain to you what i mean by this so you'll find yourself that the market was moving like this when the market moves in this kind of manner we call it low volatility right however when the market gets enough strength and it starts shooting up like so we call this high volatility such movement is caused by the market meaning that there will come a time when you're going to enter a trade here of which the market will become too volatile and this way you're going to be able to make a lot of money however if you're going to now start forecasting for the future to say it will always happen like this you will be of course incorrect because there will also come a time where you're going to enter a trade and you have to hold for at least a few days if not hours until the market moves so we have to understand that volatility is something that is actually caused by the market and that is something we cannot control time is irrelevant the only thing that actually moves the market is volatility as you see guys before we start our lesson it's important for you to understand how the forex market works so i quickly brought you here guys because i want to explain something that i think it is very important for you guys to actually get to understand so we know that whenever the market approached this level we were looking for buying opportunities as you can see guys this is acting as a support structure for this buy trend the market is now going on a bullish momentum and it has an uptrending support meaning that this is still our floor however it is still uptrending should the market cross it it's going to become a resistance right so i want to cover a simple concept real quickly for you guys to understand so i want to quickly cover guys what this actually means so this s here stands for support meaning that as long as we're still above this line here we are looking for buying opportunities only when we cross that's when we're going to look for selling opportunities meaning that our floor will become our ceiling as long as this is a floor should i cross my floor it becomes a ceiling equally opposite if this is basically my ceiling should the market decide to actually go and cross this level it will now become a support whereas in this sense our ceiling becomes our floor as you can see guys it's important for you to be able to understand these concepts as you can also use them to enter some trades so now back to our chart we see that there's an uptrending support structure the market has broke support and now it's beneath it making it a potential resistance hence this is one of the indicators that i might use to help me find a sell entry so i see that i'm expecting the market to sell at this point so this is my direction as you see guys i'm expecting the market to sell in this direction i'm not saying the market will actually sell exactly like this or as quickly as my arrow dictates no we do not lead the market we only follow so i'm only following the trend as the trend moves from a buy into a sell i'm only entering my sell trade and choosing my direction however the length or the time it will take to reach my point for that i cannot control so let's see what happened so as you can see here guys the market actually came back up as you can see here the market came back a bit i went to some bit of losses and from there it decided to push back up and to come back and retest that level which is basically if you look by the past event it was of course more of a ceiling as you see here guys we had a potential market ceiling there where the market came to retest our ceiling and dropping as the overall so as you can see here guys whenever we say the market will be dropping whenever we're going to be analyzing we cannot use or dictate how fast or how long the market will take that will depend solely on the market the only thing we can do is only choose the direction the market would head into let's look at the next example so if you look at this example here guys i analyzed the market and i basically saw my nice buy trade and i want to go for a buy and i made my analysis you see so here from my analysis guys what do you think how long do you think it will take for me to actually come from here and end up reaching this point 
So I want you guys to understand that is something that we cannot control. We just have to wait to see how the market actually plays out. As you can see here, guys, the market actually took a longer time. As you see, there will come a time where you're going to be holding your trades for a bit longer than expected due to low volatility. As you can see here, guys, we experienced some bit of low volatility and the market became volatile and then came back down again with low volatility and then shot back towards our resistance structure and completed our setup. So this is something that we cannot control, guys. Volatility is determined by the market. We cannot control that. The only thing we can do is basically follow and take what the market gives us. So now that you actually understand this concept and how time works with Forex, we can continue with our lesson. So now, guys, we're going to be covering how long should you hold your trades. So the first one we're going to start with is risk reward ratio. This is the most important because it will actually determine your overall growth in the forest industry. So the first thing is basically having a positive or a break even risk reward ratio. Meaning that guys, we actually want to focus on the fourth and the second quadrant, right? We want to have low risk and high return low risk and low return you should never find yourself having a high risk high return and this one is even not an option so don't ever find yourself using this quadrant you can only use this quadrant when you have money that you're actually more than willing to lose if you're going to be doing some small challenges that's when you can go for this quadrant however for you to actually trade safe it's important for you to actually use low risk as in order for you to win in forex trading you're going to know that risk management is also one of the most important factors that you must always cater for. So now, what does positive risk reward ratio or neutral risk reward ratio mean? We want to make sure that each trade that we take, we're actually going to be willing to win two to lose one. Meaning that when I trade, I want to make sure that my analysis is in a way that I'm actually willing to win two and lose one. As you can see, guys, this will be an overall growth. As long as I know that I'm losing one and having an overall win of two, my market will grow indefinitely. As we know, one will represent my losses and two obviously will represent my winners. So in order for us to apply this, we need to know that we have to actually stick to three points sl tp and entry point meaning that guys if you find yourself being in a position that you want to go for a buy you have to know that you must be willing to lose one to gain two meaning that if i want to go for a buy here if it's a buy position i must know that my stop loss must be at a level where i want to lose minus one but get to a point where i'm willing to actually win at least plus two it's important for you guys to have an overall positive statistical advantage so the second thing we're going to be looking for guys is what kind of trade you're in you have to know what kind of trade you're looking for and the two types of trades that we're going to be using is either you're going to be swinging or scalping and that will actually help you know how long you should hold your trades so what is a swing and what is a scalp to swing is when you're going to hold your trade for more than a day and when you scalp is actually when you're looking for some active trading where you're going to be quickly in and out of the market so being able to understand that can actually help us a lot so how can we actually use this information in a way that we can understand it let me just make a brief example let's say as usual we have our resistance at the top and we know that we have a support structure at the bottom and basically at this point guys we're actually analyzing this from a weekly perspective meaning that we're analyzing from a very bigger time frame so the market can actually do this right you can find a time where the market does this what do i mean by this how can you understand how to swim or how to scalp so basically guys what scalping is scalping is focusing on such small trades it's basically going to smaller time frame where you're going to be analyzing the market only at the current moment but on a smaller time frame not looking at the overall so basically this will be your now resistance and this is going to be a top as you can see the movement is going to take now a short period whereas if i'm actually looking for a swing trade it's going to be a bigger time frame it's going to take time to come from here to here but it will take a shorter time to come from here to here so when i scalp i'll be focusing on those small things but when i swing i want to actually catch the whole movement so as you know when you trade you have to understand if you are a patient person or you want to be more of a scalper who's going to be in and out of the market so lastly guys the most and last important one is basically volatility right so in your case guys likely we have covered this one so you already know how the volatility work as you can see guys all these three actually help a lot in knowing that how long you should hold your trades as you know risk reward ratio helps us being able to know that we're going to be having an overall win scalping is to know which trade we're going to be taking are we going to be looking for a scalp or a swing trade and lastly is the market volatile or not so without wasting any further time let's continue
So now guys, we're gonna cover the tips on how to hold on to your winning trades, right? So in order for you to do that guys, you need to know that you need to firstly identify your exit point, right? That is the most important as you're gonna need it in order for you to know when to actually close your trades. So for you to know on how long you should hold your trades, you're gonna be able to do that knowing that you know when to close it. That's how long you can hold that trade. You're not gonna close due to time, but you're gonna close due to a level that the market must reach. You understand that because we covered it. So now the next thing that you need to know guys is scaling in. What is scaling in? So when we talk about scaling in guys, basically that means we are adding to our winners. So let's say the market is currently at this point and I'm going for a nice buying position here. So I'm analyzing the market and I'm seeing that I wanna go for a buy. This is my direction. I've identified my support structure and I've seen my resistance structure and I'm seeing the market is now going for potential breaking of this trend line that we see here. And we're expecting the market to actually push to the upside and test the overall resistance. So I'm going for a buy, enter my buy trade and the market goes up. So I see that the market pushed up now. I'm seeing basically where the level has been crossed and the market is now playing in the zone. I still have my buy trade here. So what is scaling in? Scaling in is when you add another buy onto your winning trades. Meaning there is most of the time, many people only add more trades onto their losing trades. And that is how their losses always become more. How the world works like, that's exactly how the Forex market also works. Watch your focus on goals. So if you're gonna be focusing a lot on your losses, if you're gonna be adding on your losses, busy being on your screen for your losses, your losses will be more. If you're going to be focusing a lot on your profits, being able to increase your profits, working a lot on your profits, your profits will be more. Watch your focus on growth. That is the most important concept that you're supposed to know and that will help you a lot as a trader. So we see that the market here, we've entered a buy and it gave us another buy position, we've entered another buy and that's basically when we're scaling in, right? As long as you see a nice position to enter another buy, you're going to enter a buy. Here it's going to be basically a nice buy entry. Here it's upon retest. This is here upon break of a trend and here we basically close the trades with a nice scaling in method. So now guys, what is scaling out? So when we scale out guys, is when you have a bigger position running, let's say you have big profits, however you wanna hold until a specific level, right? So when you scale out, you're basically decreasing the amount of profits that you have on your running trade, meaning that you're actually closing half and leaving the remaining half in your running position until it actually hits the final exiting level. So next you wanna cover setting trading times to review your trades. This is one of the most important that you actually guys must know. Many people think that when you're gonna trade Forex, you have to be on the screen the whole day, sleep, work, repeat, sleep, work, repeat, which is not the case. When you trade guys, you're gonna see that you need to have a time where you're gonna be analyzing your charts. It can be in the morning, you're gonna be analyzing your charts, and then you're gonna find your time. It can be in the AMs or midday, where you're gonna enter your trades, and then you're gonna have a time, you're gonna have to let your trades run, as they have to do the take the course, and then you're gonna come back and then check at a different time on how the trades actually went, and that's how we actually go about trading. So the last and the most important thing, guys, is basically staying away from the charts. This one, we've been covering it over and over again, knowing that if you're gonna be glued to the screen, guys, that's how the Forex market will get to work you. That's what's gonna make you actually change your overall plan, and you're gonna be end up being a losing trader. So now we're done with this topic, guys. I hope you're enjoying the lesson as it is. We can continue, and remember, after covering all this lesson, guys, we're gonna be analyzing the market together. So last but not least, guys, how to find your trading success. I'm gonna wrap this as quickly as I possibly can. So the first thing that you're actually gonna need is to firstly identify a proven trading concept. For example, we can use breakouts or you can use high and low. What high and low is, high and low is basically be able to find the low for a specific day and the high for that specific day. So now, secondly, you need to develop a strategy around your trading concept that you might have found. So you have to see how the market works and you're gonna find a way to make sure that you're gonna back test that strategy, which is step number three. You're gonna be validating your strategy and back testing and seeing how you can actually make it work. The last and the most important tip is to always put yourself in an environment where you will stick to a trading strategy no matter what. So it's important for you to actually find a strategy that suits your trading style and you're gonna work on it for the longest time. And apart from that guys, stay tuned for analysis. I hope you enjoy the lesson. Let's get more into it. Yeah, so welcome back to the chat, guys. So today we're gonna to be covering USDCHF, also known as the dollar Swiss. 
so we're going to be analyzing this market all together guys so you're going to see from our analysis we always analyze from higher time frame and we go to smaller time frame in order for us to actually identify our entry points so we use high time frame to know the overall direction and go to smaller time frame in order for us to find nice entry points so without wasting any further time let's jump in so now guys we are looking at this dollar swiss on a weekly chart so we can see that the market was actually coming from a bearish trend you can see that the market is actually pushing towards the downside and we go to the level we experience some pushback as you can see now this became a potential support structure right let me go a bit in for you guys to be able to see properly so first things first guys we saw that the market actually reversed here came back up and reversed one more time by actually giving us a nice exhaustion or a pullback at this potential price movement so now let's look at this we are seeing that this can now be able to be used to identify our support structure as we can see the market reversed at this point and another time here making it now a more stronger support level so that's how it came to this point we knew we were looking for basically a support structure so what else can we see at this point we can see that we have another support structure of which if we can put this here we can see that this is basically a level that we want to cater and focus on right we do have a nice support structure here because this is where the market usually reverses again guys we can see that we also have a nice resistance structure here once again we can see that this is where the market usually reverse at the top so now we can see from a weekly point of view we were able to identify our high and low this is basically being able to identify our major support and resistance knowing that for now we're still under this nice playground right and if we go more with trends you're gonna see that we are seeing a nice strong resistance here you can see here the market also tests this level a lot as this can become for us a nice potential resistance as we can see from the market previously we're using the historical price movement in order for us to be able to understand the next potential price movement so we know that if the market should approach this level we're going to look for a potential sell or if we cross this line we're going to look for potential buys until this point that is one of the ways we can use analysis in order to know how long we should order trades and where to exit so we know at this point you want to exit a sell and at this point you want to exit a buy should the market push and cross towards this recent structure and actually in the final resistance at that point since we identify this level we need to sink in a bit deeper and see if the market is actually going to go for a buy or a sell so in order for us to understand that we need to know what the market did and if we were still under the buy or the sell zone so how do you go about doing that I can I have to go zoom out and see that the market was actually selling and from this point of view guys I can actually see that the market has still once again formed for me a nice small resistance so usually guys we don't like to actually put in a lot on our charts but at this point it's important for you guys to actually have this as I want to be able to explain everything more in depth for you guys to, be able to understand why we actually take some positions and why we actually take some potential movements so I'm going to change the color for that one as you can see now the color is in a way that you can understand so we know that apart from just being below this resistance we're also below this downtrending resistance meaning from an overall weekly perspective we're still under the selling opportunity because if you look closely here the market was tested twice if you can see it's one two and coming back again to confirm that three test here to knowing that we have now an actual downtrending resistance right so now let's go in a bit deeper and see what else can we do with this analysis so we want to go into the daily chart and see what the daily has in store for us so we're now in the daily chart guys you can see the market has hit the bottom here and it has hit the top here so we need to understand how did this happen here and basically i'm still seeing something here i want to show you quickly i'm seeing that before the market came here it actually had to break first towards this structure so i want to change this a bit guys so that they don't actually confuse you so that you know which is which so we see that the market here actually crossed this level here so i'm just going to put this like this guys so that you understand so i'm seeing the market here was still on a nice buy trend as long as we're still above this we're looking for buys and on a cross we're gonna go for a sell usually we like using this analysis guys as you know most of the time that's how we analyze our pair 
so we have to make sure we're catering for most touches as well so we knew that as long as we're still above this up trading support we're gonna look for buys but when we cross our support structure it now becomes our resistance hence that's why the market would have sold you would have entered a sell here and you knew that this was a potential support structure so for this analysis you already knew that if you were to enter a sell here you would have wanted to close or you would have wanted to hold until this point right here so what else happened i see that basically for that to happen guys the market was actually on a nice buy trend let me quickly do this for you guys to actually understand and see what i'm talking about right you can see that the market was still on a nice buy trend here so how can this work in a favor we know this is an uptrend in support we know this is an uptrend resistance and this here we have a small breakout because the market are just testing this overall resistance structure apart from that everything is within our resistance here and our horizontal resistance as well so the more i dive into the charts guys i can see that the market has more significant levels so i can see if i put this here i can easily find my significant level at the bottom here and this one here so i'm using all these instruments in order for me to understand what the market is doing guys i hope you're able to actually get to understand what's happening here as you can see the market is still under the setup right if you look closely here guys you're going to see that should the market actually get enough momentum to push making a nice head and shoulder here it can be able to push and break towards the structure knowing that it broke this major resistance and the overall weekly resistance therefore we are now in the buy trend we are back inside this buy trend here so that happens by a power of retest and after retesting guys we know from the point of view that we are now going to be looking for buying opportunities until the market actually reach that overall selling point right so that's what we do when we look for a buy should the market cross here we knew it's going to be a buy it's back inside the buy trend and it has crossed both our resistance we're going to enter buy it's going to be a strong push to the upside and for those who don't see the head and shoulder that i'm talking about i'm going to quickly show you what i mean by that if we dig in deeper here guys you're going to see the market actually came from here went back down came back up to retest this level went back down again came back to retest this level here went back down and now it's forming a potential head and shoulder so since we're still under this position guys what i'm actually looking for is opposite of that direction what i'm looking for currently guys i am now looking for what we call a nice selling opportunities why do i say that i'm seeing that the market has the possibility of actually retesting this point and actually dropping towards this level and for the market to reach a level it will be testing the overall support structure so for that i need to confirm let me go to the weekly time frame quickly and show you what i mean by that if you identify the overall support structure you can see here as well is still support structure here as well guys i don't know if you guys can see it in the touch and that's basically the low of that so meaning that because we're still under this resistance guys we are still looking for selling opportunities now let's go back to the smaller time frame in order to see what we're gonna do exactly so if we look here closely guys if our entire sell with my analysis guys i'm going to be hoping to sell until it reaches the overall support structure so in order for you guys to be able to understand how we approach analysis do check out our other youtube channel i recommend you should go through the channel as it can really improve your analysis levels and you can see how you can implement the lessons you have learned from this video onto that lesson as well so apart from that guys i hope you enjoyed the video this service with your mental signing out